Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Gen Con 2018 in Indiana, uh, in Indianapolis. And we're going to be doing a uh, board game review for uh, B Lives. We will only know summer. Here I am with Matt Shoemaker. I'm the designer of B Lives. And we're going to be talking about the game basically. It's going to be coming out on Kickstarter very shortly, yep. I imagine. September 10th, we're coming to Kickstarter. Okay, and so how many players is it? What kind of game is it? Just the basic idea of it all. Sure, so Be Lives is a worker placement resource management game for one to four players. It takes about 30 minutes per player to go through the game. Uh, it's about a medium, medium plus weight euro um, with a lot of uh, tile laning mechanics and just a little smidge of take that that's put in there that is optional if you want to take it as well. Uh, basically, you go through the game as a uh, beehive living in the wild. You play through one calendar year and uh, you do your best to survive for nature and earn victory points for doing things that helps bees propagate themselves in the real world. So that would be um, robbing and defending from other hives and taking their honey resources, by hoarding hive, uh, honey and workers within your hive, and also by swarming. The swarming is how bees reproduce and you want to spread yourself across the map. The swarm is also an important part of the game because they uh, create little AI hives we call wild hives in the game that then will attack and use their own workers to forage and interact with the other players on the map. So I noticed it's like a, uh, it's also got like tile placement aspects as well to the game, obviously, right? It does, yes. Okay, and so when people are going to look at this game, they're going to be thinking of more tile placement, more of a worker management, or more Euro. What, what, what do you think is like the most important aspect about the game? The most important aspect of the game by far is resource management. Tile playing plays a big part of it. There's strategy. Uh, we'll show you the game in a little second. I'll get into that, if you can see. But the number one thing, and the real true puzzle, is the resource management aspect. There are five resources in the game. We've got honey, water, pollen, eggs, and then the workers yourself are a resource because you can spend them when you're defending and in certain other actions, as well as the fact that you can lose them if you cannot feed your workers. So you can actually lose some of your, uh, your kind of, your engine can be weakened by that way. You also lose half your workers when you swarm. So you have to build back up for that. So there's a trade-off of those victory points in creating that as well. You, but in the end, it can hurt you as well. Exactly. Exactly. Let's go show the game um, yep. Be Lives. Sure. So right here, we've got this map set up. This is in about the third month of the game, so a little less than halfway through. So the first thing we would do is flip a new card, and this adds a weather effect to it and starts off with the game. So and that weather effect actually influences the entire game itself, right? Correct. So in this case, this one is... a. Uh, Harvest tiles, which are these orange ones, they basically count as an extra resource. So all these tiles have different values depending on which month of the game it is, um, or I'm sorry, season really. So in spring, the green ones are worth the most, in summer, the yellow ones, and fall, the orange ones. Awesome. Yeah. And all of that, but each and every single player has their own unique um, meeples for the different types of bees they're going to be yes. using. So you can tell the difference between them. And like, they're all going to have their own unique little beehives and areas as well, basically, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. So the game starts off. You start laying tiles. You do blind draw by two in the bag. You select one. You place the other one down to build out your little world. And when summer starts, this is one of the most unique mechanisms of the game, is you're actually going to combine these maps and decide strategically what tiles you want to be by and whose hive, which opponent you want to be closer to. And those are the people you're going to be messing with mainly, right? Oh, of course, totally. So that's you, you combine like that, and down here in the main board, this is where you're going to manage everything. You've got your workers here. You've got a queen for a little asymmetry. There are four different queens in the game that give you different powers. And then over here is your comb with uh, the different amounts of resources you can have. And this also dictates how many bees you can have before you swarm. All the actions are listed here. And then finally, we have a disease track that uh, manages the, uh, the health and happiness of your hive. The lower it is, the uh, worse off your bees are going to be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't want to get down there. That's bad stuff. Okay, so they have an idea of how uh, the game's going to be functioning, basically. Um, what made you think of this idea for bee lives? Like, is, yeah. Because maybe colony collapse, that's something that kind of came into in mind at all? Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. I, I mean, I am a, I'm a librarian by day, and I do a lot of game design in my day job, but I've also been a beekeeper for the last eight years. So I do a lot with the Philadelphia Honey, uh, Honey Festival and the Philadelphia Beekeepers Guild, and I just really wanted to make a game that everybody could enjoy and also just learn something about bees. I mean, I'm planning on creating some pedagogical material so people can use this in the classroom, um, but that said, I mean, this is a, a very uh, strategically heavy game that you can play and really get into with any of your friends that like those medium, medium plus weight Euro games. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your time and taking a look at the game. Um, one last question, a little tough one. What uh, do you want to do to influence the gaming community yourself uh, uniquely compared to anybody else? 
Uh, yeah, I want to raise uh, kind of awareness about different issues through the games that I create. So that could be, in this case, beekeeping. It could be kind of social justice issues. Anything like that that I really want to kind of use as games as a kind of a, both a learning mechanism as well as kind of for social change. I think that's what I really like to do. I'm not doing it in a minor way with Bee Lives, but hey, it's a, you know, it's a step in the right direction, in my opinion. Oh, definitely. And I mean, who, who cares like this type of theme anyway, right? Exactly. It's beautiful. Yeah. Right, well, thank you very much for taking the time at Gen Con here. And as always, guys, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Yeah, thank you. No. Hello everybody, this is Callie with Unfiltered Gamer and we are here at Gen Con this week and today I am here with Carla Kopp from... Weird Draft the, Games. The scrum? Sorry. Oh, I'm from Weird Draft Games. Yay, okay. And she's sharing, uh, what are you sharing today at Gen Con? Um, I'm uh, sh sharing a Stellar Leap right now. Uh, how were you involved in crea the creation of Stellar Leap? Uh, well, I'm the designer, developer, publisher, all the things. Wow, that's awesome. I love go girl power, right? Thank you. <laughs> um, what's unique about Stellar Leap that you want to share, like if you wanted people to come and, and check out the game? So um, Stellar Leap, it's like an entry-level 4X game that you um, kind of decide how long you want to play with it. So if you want it to be about an hour, you can do that. But if you want it to be shorter or longer, you can do that as well. And it's the 4X that kind of does the more exploration, which I don't think a lot of 4X really like go for that. They go more for like exploiting or exterminating. And what's the explorative aspects of the game? So you start off with only your home planet, and then you can decide what the rest of the galaxy is. You get to explore all of the rest of it and dictate where it is and when you're going to go to it. Awesome. And then, like, uh, what types of people would be really interested in this game? Like, uh, uh, how many players is it? And um, uh, was it good for families, for game groups? So um, it's for one to five players, so if you're into a solo game, it has that. It also does really good at high player accounts. Um, it's kind of an entry level 4X, so if you've never played one before, this would be a good place to start. Or if you want a 4X experience, but you don't want to spend four hours doing so, like it's also a shorter 4X. Okay, could you show me a little bit of the game and the components here on the table? For sure, for sure. So here we have all the different player boards. There's five different ones, and there are the dual layer player boards as well. We have the custom meeples, which are your population that you send off into the galaxy to explore. Um, we have all these different home planets up here. We have the score pad, and oh, we have these action tracker markers because um, you track your resources on your resource tracker in your cargo hold. But you also have this action tracker. Like, you don't have to use it, but I think it's good, like, I don't like to remember stuff because, you know, why do that? So every time I do an action, I push it down, and then, like, I can see, like, oh, I've done all my actions, I'm done now, like, next player. I think it really speeds up the game. Yeah, and kind of uh, adds that visual element for everything so you don't have to, yeah, keep track of it. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, like, a lot to keep track of, um, but, you know, if you need the, the extra stuff to keep track of. That makes it more friendly to the people who may not be uh, used to 4X games, right? Exactly, exactly. Like, people that are really into 4X games, like, they don't need it at all. But, like, if this is the first time you've ever played one, you're like, oh, what can I do? In what order? Well, you just look at your um, player board and you know. Awesome. And I have one more question for you. Um, what uh, unique experience or vision do you have for that you want to bring to the board game community? Um, I really like, um, when I try to create games, I try to create games that are really accessible to a lot of people. So I try to create games that are like visually very accessible, so it's like all colorblind friendly. I try to make games where like, like the remembering part, like I don't want to make it too hard. I want like anyone to be able to game and have fun. So I try to like be really inclusive from all aspects. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Carla. It was great to meet you. Do you have any last things you want to say? Um, if anyone wants to find out more about my games, I have WeirdDraftGames.com. Um, Fire in the Library is another one of my games, and it's on pre-order now at FireInTheLibrary.com. And really, just if you want to reach out, talk about anything, design, publishing, feel free to like go on Twitter and friend me and or follow me. And, you know, just reach out. Send me an email at contact at weirddraftgames.com. And, 
you know, we can talk about games because, like, games are my passion. <laughs> Mine too. Awesome. Thank you. So nice to meet you, Carla. And thank you guys for listening. And we will see you guys next time. Hey guys, Michael right here with Unfiltered Gamer and we're currently at Gen Con 2018 in, Indiana, in Indianapolis and we are here with Chad Gagnon from Thymia Games with the game Executive Order that just launched today on Kickstarter. He's going to talk about it. Alright, yes, we just launched our Kickstarter today. We're in the First Play Exposure Hall, so if you're here you want to get your hands on it, uh, come find us. We're also doing Gen Con specific booster pack, so if you back us, we'll give you the pack. When is the game going to be over? Like, how long is it going to be on for? Uh, we are running till Dragon Con. So we're opening at Gen Con, closing at Dragon Con. So if you're not sure yet, you can find us there also and get your hands on it before you back it. What kind of game is this like? And uh, what, what kind of people are going to like this game? Uh, we kind of tried to make it across the board to where it's a mixture of, or it's been described today as a mixture of Uno, Flux, and um, uh, different strategy games. Because you're competing against each other while working together to get your end goal. So you don't want to make enemies, but you don't want to be you know, too lenient and let somebody get ahead of you. So it's kind of like a, how many players is it right now? Uh, it's up to eight players. It's an eight player game. It's kind of a take that style game as well, you'd yeah. say. And it's called Executive Order and it's currently on Kickstarter. It's going until Dragon Con, basically. Yeah. Is there anything special people need to know about the game? Um, it's different. Um, we haven't seen a game like it that I've found. It's not the most amazing thing ever, but it's, Every it, game's supposed to be the most amazing thing ever. Well, I mean, maybe. Uh, but everybody that's put it on the table has left with a smile. I can say that. So if you think this is something you'd be like, check us out. Check our website, Thymia Games, Games, uh, the Kickstarter, Executive Order. And we can get all from information there on ourselves. You want to know us a little bit more, a little bit about the game, email us, questions. We'd love to get back to you. Okay, and the last thing I ask everybody is, so what is your, are you going to change in the industry as far as gaming is concerned? What is it that you want to make a change to? Um, we're, or your footprint, basically. So with Executive Order, we took something that typically isn't spoken about well, headlines, politics, and we made it political satire. We made it fun. Because people were sitting at the demos today, and they were joking about typically the headlines that people would argue about. And so we took something that was negative, and we made it positive, and so we made something enjoyable out of something that's not. And that's where we'd like to go with future stuff as we're recognized as the people who make the games that people walk away smiling. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking time with us at Unfiltered Gamer. We appreciate it. And as always, look forward to seeing you guys next time here at Gen Con. Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game interview here at Gen Con 2018 in Indiana. We are going to be talking with Daryl T. Jones, some Splattered Ink games, and the game is Dober's Quest for the Key. He's going to be telling us a little bit about it, which is uh, currently still on Kickstarter, I believe? Yep, it's currently on Kickstarter still. We've got about three weeks to go. We're already funded. We're getting close to our third stretch goal, so having fun. It's a lot of, it's a lot of fun, so yeah. So when I first got to review this game, uh, there has been some changes now made to it, and some good ones. We just were talking previous to this interview about what the changes were and kind of what it's going to look like, as well as for people who haven't seen Dover's or anything like that, uh, maybe they want to go ahead and check it out. We're going to go ahead and show you the board, and he'll talk a little bit about it. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, since he saw an earlier prototype, we have done a little bit more art. We've improved the player cards, so I'll hold up one of these. So uh, each player will choose a hero. Uh, there's actually going to be a ton of heroes in the box because one of our funding levels allow you to create your own hero and then on the back of the card you can see that there's basically a player aid kind of walks you through how to use action points and then gives you uh, ability to track your current action points based on your hero so if you've got challenge and universal and travel points you can use these little tokens to to keep those uh, in track from turn to turn. Which is super useful for like, a, it's because it's a family game, so it's pretty useful in the terms of like learning how to do that. But once you get and get an idea of how to do it, you're not going to actually need to do that anymore, which is also nice for those more strategically inclined gamers, right? Right, yeah. Which is also nice too, you have a full art on the back. It's always nice when designers and artists and all that decide to go the extra mile and just add a little bit of extra. You could have just added a black background, but you went a little farther. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to, to show off the characters. I mean, the illustration for me is uh, one of my 
my passions uh, is why I'm in this industry, not only because I love games, but because I love to draw, and uh, I get to do the both now. So, so you're gonna be doing uh, play tests and all that kind of stuff going on here at Gen Con, right? A couple, right. couple play sessions. Fortunately, this is not gonna go out before or after, before Gen Con is over, because. I'm going to be here all the days. But uh, if you are interested in checking the game out, where can you check it out? I've already told you it's already on Kickstarter, right? But you also have a website, I imagine? Right, yes. Splatterdink.com is my website. But you can go straight to DobbersQuest.com, and it'll go straight to the Kickstarter. Uh, once Kickstarter's over, that'll point back to it, the, its own site. Okay, and is there any uh, special stretch goals or any secrets I can get out of you about uh, what you have in mind? Sure. Yeah, there's a couple really cool things we have coming up that haven't been announced yet, and it's going to be announced after Gen Con, so if this is coming out after Gen Con, that's fine. Um, we I'm going to purposely try and get this out before now. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, yeah, you've got the, you've got the dish. Um, because this is based on a comic book, I don't know if we discussed that yet, so it's based on a comic book. I am going to kind of write a loose chapter uh, where a, the faction of the rats is going to attack and then the backers are going to, going to get to vote on a new card to counter the attack. So we're going to kind of create a little bit of story during the campaign that will be added to the box and everyone will get it, but it's going to be based on the backers' decision and, and it's going to be a lot of fun. A little bit of it. audience participation, right? Exactly. That's exactly. a great idea, I think, and it's good to, for community building as well. But anyway, Daryl, I don't want to take too much more of your time already as it is, but I do appreciate you taking the time to tell us a little bit about Dobbers, the uh, quest for the key, and uh, we look forward to having you guys go ahead and check it out on... Uh, Kickstarter, which is still going on right now. But all right, guys, thank you for watching. Oh, one more question I got to ask. One more really important question. What unique thing do you want to bring to the industry that you don't think anybody else is doing that you need to do? That I need to do? Well, yes. I'm going to have to answer that twice. Um, personally, I think it's using story as a dr driving mechanic for the games I produce. I, I want to create worlds. I want to create an atmosphere that's unique and that people can enjoy. Um, to consume not only because of the competitiveness of the game, but just because they like the characters in the story. Uh, specifically for this game, uh, the ability to not only build your deck, but you're building the board as you go. So the more competitive you are, the more you're putting out uh, extra challenging locations for your opponents to face. So both those I think are unique, and especially for this game, I'm, I'm excited to get to merge them together. Well, I've actually gotten to check out the game and give it a review. Uh, prior to its new state, which looks even better, you can go ahead and watch my review on the game as well if you'd like. I think it's pretty much still in the same same rules, maybe little changes here and there. Yeah, yeah the rules are very similar. There's a, a few cards that have um, Tweaks kind of extra not. hard rules, and if you want to overlook those, you basically decide before they end. We're not using the highlighted text, <laughs> but that'll just make it a little easier if you want a faster game. So, yeah, but other than that, it's the same. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Great. And we look forward to seeing you guys next time, hopefully for next year at Gen Con, if I'm lucky enough, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks again.